Hey you guys, it's Bray tonight. We're here with a little update on Jackson Mahomes. He had his day in court today and there are some updated uh, pieces of information that I want to share with you guys. This whole situation is so crazy, but I also think that it speaks to um, just overall entitlement and ego. This is awful, but if you're interested, please keep watching. All right, you guys, so we're all familiar with what is going on with Jackson Mahomes. He was recently arrested, and his cringy TikToks that just make my skin crawl are really the, um, not, not the biggest deal when you look at the things that are unfolding right now, but I'm going to cite this article, and I will link it in my description box in case you guys want to read it for yourselves. But essentially, it just says new details in the battery case against Jackson Mahomes emerged Monday as a new court document was released per KCTV. Police were originally called to an Overland Park restaurant in late February after a man told them Jackson Mahomes, the TikTok dancing social media influencer and younger brother of Kansas City Chiefs quarterback Patrick Mahomes allegedly shoved his son who works at Aspen's restaurant, with the allegations becoming more serious when local police interviewed the restaurant's owner that evening. What the court document allegedly shows, according to the document, Mahomes told the restaurant's owner that he wanted to speak with her during, that e during the evening, so the two went into the restaurant's office. After Mahomes closed the door to the office, he also allegedly grabbed her by the throat, pushed her head back, and kissed, kissed her three times. Per the court document, the affidavit allegedly states that the restaurant's owner did not consent to any of the contact from Mahomes. The restaurant's owner allegedly pushed Mahomes off of her at one point during the incident. The owner told investigators that Mahomes told her to not tell anyone what occurred between the two, according to the court document. After Mah after Mahomes left the restaurant, the owner told the two employees about the interaction and showed them her neck, which allegedly had a visible bruise. The court document states Mahomes later returned to the restaurant where he allegedly attempted to talk about the restaurant's business and wouldn't leave again until he gave her a hug. The owner's boyfriend then allegedly kicked Mahomes and his friends out of the restaurant, with Mahomes angrily leaving. According to the court document, this was not the first time that Mahomes had been kicked out of Aspen's restaurant. The shove is allegedly the result of Mahomes trying to get a water bottle from the restaurant's office. The restaurant's employee allegedly opened the door to the office by entering a key code, with Mahomes immediately shoving him out of the way once unlocked. Per the court document, investigators saw surveillance video of the alleged moment. The tape showed Jackson Mahomes pushing the employee. He later allegedly tried to apologize to the employee. Well, Jackson, you can't just say sorry and be a fucking dangerous menace. This is a really, really big problem. Mahomes was scheduled to be in court Tuesday, ruling on modification to his bond where Mahomes would be allowed to contact witnesses in the case. Per KCTV, a date for a preliminary hearing would take place next week. Neither Mahomes' attorney nor the Jackson County District Attorney's Office could, couldn't comment on the case to KCTV, but Mahomes' attorney, Brandon Davies, has previously refuted the claims. His sister-in-law, Brittany Matthews, took to Instagram on Monday to share some cryptic posts. One said, as you get older, you start to understand the difference between friends, friends and associates, family and blood, business and work, love and lust, want and need, and what's most important and what's not. So that's the update on Jackson. This whole situation reeks of just an entitled little coattail riding, law breaking, egomaniac idiot who is out here running amok. And listen, I know that we've all been in our early 20s at, at one point in time. 
there is a big difference between just being in your young 20s and, you know, breaking some rules once in a while and getting a little wild and crazy versus literally sexually assaulting people and becoming a danger to those in your community. And that is why people are so upset with this situation. It is just disgusting. It reeks of entitlement and disgust. I wanted to share that quick update with you guys. I'll continue to keep an eye on this. I hope that he doesn't just get let off with a little slap on the wrist because he has access to money through his brother. And I think that he will strike again because... Typically, if you don't teach somebody a lesson, they could repeat it, depending on the situation. And I think that he's incredibly stupid, and I think that he will strike again. The other thing I wanted to share with you guys is that Jojo Siwa's house was broken into, and that article is going around as well. Jojo has also shared her own thoughts about what happened? Jojo Siwa speaking now, telling her fans about a terrifying break-in in her Tarzana home. The popular dancer sharing this video of the mass burglars on social media that she says were armed. Police tell us they responded to a call about the break-in early morning. They say they cannot say what was taken because it may hinder the investigation. Siwa telling her fans there is some damage and that she is happy her family and her dogs are okay. How's, how's break-in status? Did we catch them? Um, that I don't know. It's really hard to talk to back home right now because of the Wi-Fi and stuff. Right. Um, the, my house is locked the fuck down. And security is at a really, 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 really great, tight ship. It's really, but really tight Was ship. there anyone home when it happened? Uh, no, and no puppies either, which I'm, I'm so thankful for because... So like they smashed my dining room door and if my dogs were there, my dogs would have ran out 100% because they and smashed they the bottom yeah. panel. But also then when they left, they went through the front door. And I mean, like obviously, yes, scared of the robber with the dog, but I would be also scared of, okay, robber leaves. They don't do anything with my dogs. My dogs will go outside if the door is open. Like they're not going to, yeah. I'm like star gone. She would have been gone from a coyote if she spent a second outside at night. Like Let alone so stepping on the glass. Like that's not that's not What'd safe. Let alone stepping on the glass. Yeah. It's not safe. But what did they steal? Um, they stole a Wait, lot. Broke into your house? So yeah. literally. Oh, wow. Literally. Yeah. And how I found out was someone DM'd me and I thought I thought they were just talking about how like some like I can't remember talking about. Yeah, but then we got I looked spotted on it. before, but not. Yeah, this was legit. Yeah. I'm just lucky and thankful and grateful that everyone is safe. Like the door is, we have to fix, and security shit we have to add, and like there's a lot of materialistic things that are missing that are valuable, mental. Like people are okay. Puppies are okay. Yeah. That's all that matters to me. You That's know what I mean? All that matters, yeah. Like the material will come and go, you know? Right. Nope. <laughs> um, all right, you I'm two, we'll go get back to your date. The only thing that I want to say about this is this is why I preach about social media and internet safety. And I realize it's not my job to tell people to be safe and not share their home address and film outside their house and stuff. But when I see situations like this, I just think, would this have happened if people were not so open about where they live? When you're a public figure, yes, I know, like, celebrities, it's easier to find out, like, where celebrities live because they are so famous. But with these YouTubers and stuff, if, if they're not on that celebrity level, and I know JoJo is very, very popular... But if you're somebody who is smaller and not as popular, like it's a great practice to instill to not film outside your home and not tell followers where you live and not, uh, you know, film your new car showing the license plate and not showing boxes with the tracking numbers so that people can figure out where you live. It's just also crazy 
internet safety is something that's very important to me. And I feel like when I talk about it, I'm called a content cop and, oh, why do you care? It's not your problem, blah, blah, blah. It's a wild world out there, guys. And as somebody who creates content online, I see so much of this and it's like, wow, like you're literally giving anyone who comes across this video a preview as to what the front of your house looks like. That is wild. You never know who's on the opposite side of your camera lens. You don't know who's watching you. You don't know who's watching you silently. You know, part of it couldn't even be like, oh, they're leaving comments all the time or, oh, I talked to that person in DMs or they sent me an email. Some people could just be silently watching and you're literally showing them the front of your house and it's just crazy. It sucks that that happened to Jojo. I don't follow her. I don't enjoy her content, but nobody should have their safety put at risk. So either way. I think that's going to be it for today. Quick little video, but for now, if you like the video, please leave a like and a comment. And if you'd like to see more from me in the future, please subscribe. I'll see you guys soon. Bye.